let that music say? Yes, sir, Amos. That music say good health to all from Rexall. The stores with the orange and blue sign. Yes, 10,000 independent Rexall druggists at the stores with the orange and blue sign bring you transcribed The Amos and Andy Show, written by Joe Connolly and Bob Mosier, featuring Ernestine Wade, Johnny Lee, Amanda Randolph, Tommy Moore, Roy Glenn, Yvonne Watson, Jeff Alexander's music, yours truly Harlow Wilcox, and starring radio's all-time favorites, Freeman Gosden and Charles Carell. Amos and Andy! <laughs> How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Freeman Gosden. Along with my partner, Charles Carell, and our sponsors, the Rexall Family Druggist, I want to wish you all a very happy Easter. It's the hope of everybody on our show that all the blessings of this joyous Sunday will remain with you throughout the year. Well, a few weeks ago, Andy Brown was walking down Lenox Avenue without a care in the world when suddenly a potted geranium toppled from a second-story window. And before Andy knew it, spring had arrived right on the top of his head. No! Oh! Oh, my head! My head! Hmm, Listen to the birdies sing. And them bells. There must be a fire someplace. Oh, me... Oh, oh, my. oh, you poor, poor man. Oh. That flower pot slipped right out of my hand. I'm terribly sorry. Sorry, listen. You realize that a thing like this could almost... That you almost... That you... That you... You drop a... Uh, uh... Hello. <laughs> at your poor, poor head. What a terrible bum. Oh, it ain't nothing, honey. What's a little concussion at a time like this? <laughs> well, it's a nasty old bum. Here, let me rub it and make it feel better. There, now isn't that better? Well, it, uh... It, uh... uh... <laughs> I'm really so sorry. Yeah, me too. Uh, I hope my knob didn't damage your beautiful geranium. (laughs) Oh, that's sweet of you, Mr. Mr. Uh, Andrew Hogg Brown. Uh, Andy, to my friend. My name is Teresa Wilson, Andy. Well, now, that's a pretty name. I had a toad once back home named Teresa. (laughs) I don't remember its last name. You come in. I um, I think you need an ice pack on that bump. I'll get some ice cubes. Yeah, yeah. Well, you better get a lot of them, Teresa, because the way I feel now, I could defrost the whole refrigerator. <laughs> well, Andy thought he'd found the big romance of his life. He sent Teresa flowers, took her to the movies. Yes, Andy was really in love. Then he called up one morning and was informed that Teresa had eloped. Eloped with another man. And he was crushed. And right now, the kingfish, his wife Sapphire, and her mother are discussing the situation. I don't blame the girl not wanting to have no part of a moocher like Andy Brown. Me neither. (laughs) I don't blame her for giving that cut-rate Casanova the game. Uh, well, Andy's pretty well busted up about it, I'll tell you that. Uh, we was over at Luigi's uh, Pizza Palace last night when somebody played uh, that Samore on the jute box. Poor boy broke down and blubbered right into his pasta vizool. Well, if you ask me, he's a poor excuse for a man going to pieces over something like that. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> They don't make men like they used to when I got married back in the gay 90s. Yeah, I guess you're right, Mama. They must have built them 1890 models with a stronger stomach than they got now. <laughs> well, we 
was you, I wouldn't start talking about looks, Baldy. <laughs> Last time I seen a face like yours, it was peering at me from a hollow stump. <laughs> Mama's right, George. You know, you was very fortunate to marry into a good-looking family like we is. I'll say. <laughs> me and my two daughters was all beautiful. Why, when we dressed up and went to church on Sunday... Everybody turned around and stared up. I'll say they did. You was the only gals in town that rented advertising space on your bustles. <laughs> <laughs> and that was quite a sight, the three of you going down the main street and step with your bustles spelling out Copenhagen snuff. <laughs> that ain't true, and we ain't discussing me and Mama. We're talking about that big boob friend of yours, Andy Brown. Yeah, well, I think I'll go down to the large hall and cheer him up. The boy really got the melancholic this time. He don't even know uh, who the fella is that uh, Teresa eloped with. Well, it serves him right. A man and his age chasing after some young hussy. Hmm. All men is the same. You think if they wanted romance, they'd go after a mature woman like me that's in a friendly 50s. <laughs> Friendly 50s. Mama, you was not only hit the sour 60s, but you was run into the smoochless 70s. <laughs> well, well, well. Uh, glad I found you here at the Lodge Hall, Brother Andy. How is you this fine, bright, sunshiny morning? Oh, I am so down in the mouth that I'd have to cheer myself up to be miserable. Oh, no, now listen, Andy. Don't be moping about a woman. Look what that great poet, uh, Rudyard Chipper, said. He say, uh, what is a woman? He say, a woman is, uh, just a rag, a boon, and a hank of hair. Yeah, but some of them show is glued together awful nice. <laughs> now listen, Andy. Ain't no sense in getting all busted up about this. Don't forget there's plenty of fish in the sea. A lot of pebbles on the beach and all that stuff. Yeah, I know that, Kingfish, but I likes gal. <laughs> but the thing that gets me is that this is the first time in my whole smooching career where a gal done a dirty trick and walked out on me. I, as usual, the one that runs out on them. Yeah, but up to now, you always been the Jill Taw. And this is the first time you has been the Jill T. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wanted to marry it, Teresa, because I figured it was time I settled down. Yeah, you're getting along in years, Andy. And if you waste any longer to set sail on the sea of matrimony, you're going to find you ain't got enough steam left to get out the harbor. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> well, Kingfish, I just can't understand it. Her eloping with another fellow without even leaving me a note. You think I am losing my power over the feline sex? <laughs> well, let me look at you here, boy. Let me look you over. Yeah, now, what do you think? Well, standing there with your run-down heels, the buttons off your vest, and them jowls drooping over that wing collar, you ain't exactly no Casanova can, you know. <laughs> but you does have a certain rustic charm to you. <laughs> rustic charm, huh? Yeah, and uh, I think you was the type that the hip chicks today would refer to as a real gone slob. <laughs> I tell you, I, I don't want to lose Teresa. Ain't there no way I could find out what's wrong with me as far as the women's is concerned? Well, all I can think for you to do is uh, go to one of them nervous doctors, you know, and have yourself uh, psychoanalyzed, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I've heard of them, yeah. You know any good ones? Yeah, and I heard about one of them that moved over here on the boulevard about a month ago. Uh, yeah, he got a whole suite of offices over there on the ground floor. Yeah. Wait a minute. Oh, uh... Dr. Melville Tompkins. Mm. Hey, why don't you make an appointment with him, Andy? Dr. Melville Tompkins. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, mm -hmm. You think he's going to be able to help me? Yeah, hey, Andy. He'll charge you about five bucks a visit. Holy mackerel. That brain work must come high. <laughs> I didn't pay that much to have the corns cut off my big toe. Oh, I know. <laughs> Well, Teresa, here we are, back from our honeymoon in our own apartment. Yes, dear. 
Now, the first thing tomorrow, we'll have some announcements made, and, and we can send them out to all our friends. Hey, maybe we could have a party. Yes, but I can't say I'm looking forward to meeting some of those old suitors of yours. Well, I'll admit I had a lot of boyfriends, but uh, don't tell me that you're jealous. Teresa, I'm crazy about you. And I'm sorry to say that jealousy is one of the weak points of my character. Why, dear, a man like you is supposed to be above that sort of emotion. I can't help it, Teresa. There's no telling what I might do if I ran into some of those old boyfriends of yours. <laughs> Why, Dr. Melvin Tonkin, you just must control that temper of yours. <laughs> Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist, one of the 10,000 independent druggists who have made the word Rexall part of our own store names. We've done that because we recommend and sell Rexall drug products. For acid indigestion, we recommend Rexall's four-way relief, Bismarex gel. This new liquid antacid combines Rexall's time-tested Bismarex formula with two new ingredients. Aluminum hydroxide and magnesium trisilicate. One helps relieve excess stomach acidity, and the other leaves a protective covering on irritated stomach membranes. So for prolonged as well as prompt relief from acid-upset stomach, ask for Bismarex gel. That's B-I-S-M-A-R-E-X. Bismarex gel. Rexall's liquid antacid. At Rexall drug stores... Everywhere. Oh, uh, thank you very much, nurse. Uh, you can tell Dr. Tompkins that me and my brain will be there at 3 o'clock. Goodbye. Well, Dr. Tompkins going to see you at 3 o'clock, huh, Ender? Yeah, but I was awful nervous about going to the doctor's, Kingfish. Yeah, well, nothing to worry about, uh... If he's going to do anything that'll hurt you, he'll asphyxiate you first, you know. He ain't... Uh, well, i always been scared of doctor since I was a kid and had trouble with my tonsils. I went to the doctor to have him out, and I started jumping and squirming in the chair so much that he missed my tonsils and snipped off my palate. Cut the thing right out of your throat, huh? Yes, sir. And I got quite a write-up in the medical journal, too. Sure enough. I was the only man in the country can swallow a meatball without putting a groove on it. <laughs> about that kind of stuff with a psychiatrist. I don't know. Oh, no. They ain't allowed to do much cutting. Matter of fact, most of them are so jumpy from working with nuts, why, the medical association won't allow a knife within 50 feet of them. <laughs> well, uh, tell me this. What is this doctor going to do? Well, uh, what's he going to do? Uh, he going to probe your subconscious. With his bare hands? <laughs> oh, no, Andy. Them psychiatrists works with the mind. You lay us down on the couch and starts talking. He can ask you questions, whether you hated your mama and papa or whether you was in love with your neighbor's little red wagon. All them things that any normal American boy goes through with, you know. Yeah, well, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to get the hang of that. Oh, now it's simple. And look here, I'll tell you what. I'll show you how them uh, psychopathics work here. Now, uh, <laughs> uh, lay back there on the sofa there. That's it. Now, get your feet up there. Yeah, okay. That's it. Now, lay back there, Andy, and close your eyes. Relax, relax. Now, this is just the way the doctor do it. I don't want to make you comfortable there. Mm, tell me something. Do these fellas always psychoanalyze you with their hand on the patient's pocket? <laughs> no, 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 Andy. I, I wasn't trying to pick your pocket there. I was just checking your metatorsal nerve. That's all I was doing. <laughs> yeah, well, I was relaxed. Now, what must I do now? Well, Andy, uh, let your subconscious come to the fore. Now, just think out loud. Just start talking about... Uh, what you thinking now? Start talking about your childhood. Mm, my childhood. Well, school, little girls, old swimming hole, little girls. <laughs> the apple orchard, little girls. 
<laughs> and uh, is that all you think about in your childhood, little girl? Oh, no, Kingfish. I only think about little girls till I got up to the fourth grade. Yeah, what'd you think about then? Big girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't get this, Kingfish. How is talking to this Dr. Melville Tompkins about my childhood going to help me find out why Teresa throwed me over? Well, then, did a man go ask you about everything? Your romances and everything else. He's he going to prove. Well, must I tell him about Teresa, about smooching with her and everything? Oh, certainly, and uh, You can't hold nothing back from them, men against the law. They won't tell you that. Now, tell me this. Uh, is I even got to tell him about that night up in the balcony of the Bijou Theater? Is he going to be interested in that stuff? Oh, certainly, and uh, if you give him all the facts, why, he going to know what kind of action to take with you. See what I mean? <laughs> yeah, well... I'll tell him everything about me and Teresa, then. I think before I go over there, though, I'll go home and change my socks. As long as I'm paying him $5, I might let him have a look at my corns, too. Yeah, that's... <laughs> well, it's quarter to three, and he ought to be on his way to Dr. Tompkins pretty soon now. I feel sorry for that doctor trying to find Andy's subconscious. If it's any smaller than his conscious, why, well, he's liable to go right past him. <laughs> and I sure hope the boy has a... Uh, I wonder who that could be. Come in. Hi, you can't be. Well, Calhoun, what bring you over here, boy? Oh, I just been down to the police station talking to my cousin Murgatroyd. Oh, Murgatroyd, that crazy bebop musician, huh? Yeah. Yeah, what was he doing down there? Well, it seemed that Murgatroyd and that real gone band he plays with got a job out at the beach. So last night, him and his trombone player took a walk out to the end of the fishing pier. And all of a sudden, that crazy trombone player spread both his arms out and hollered, I is lucky, Mindy, and I was flying back to Paris again. And with that, he took off and run right off the end of the pier and drowned himself. <laughs> Holy mackerel, uh, when he said that he was lucky, Lindy, why didn't Murgatroyd stop him? Well, that's, that's what the police asked him, and Murgatroyd said, I thought he knew what he was doing. He made it the first time. <laughs> I see the point. Hey, uh, well, Andy, I, I heard some news about that girlfriend of his, Teresa. Uh, news, Calhoun? Yeah, I, I, I found out who the fella is she loped with. He's a great big ex-football player. Holy mackerel, uh, now ain't that something? Yeah, well, he used to be a football player, but he's a doctor now. Maybe you heard of him. Dr. Melville Tompkins, the psychiatrist. Yeah, I heard of him. He's the fellow that, uh, he, uh, he, uh, uh, <laughs> Melville Tompkins. Yeah. Holy smoke, Calhoun. Huh? And there's over at Dr. Tompkins' office right now, about to give him a round-by-round -round description of his romance with Teresa. Man, that ain't good at all. <laughs> yeah. When Andy tells him the story about the balcony of the bijou, yeah. Andy's going to... Go right from subconscious to the unconscious. <laughs> I tell you, Calhoun, I got to find some way to, to warn that poor boob. Yeah, but how you going to do that? You can't bust right into no doctor's office. Oh, wait a minute, yeah. I just think in Dr. Tompkins' office is over on the boulevard on the ground floor. Yeah. Oh, I wonder where that old guitar of mine is. Oh, I remember. The guitar is in the basement. I'm going to get it and go over there in the alley right outside the doctor's window and try to warn Andy. Well, now, I don't know what you got on your mind, but I sure hope it works. Yeah. You know, I've been having a lot of trouble with my girlfriend, too. Oh, you is? Yeah. I went up to see her the other night, and I found a derby in the closet. But she said it was hers that she wore it when she went riding in the park. Oh, she did, huh? Yeah. The next night I went up there, and I found a walking stick in the living room. But she said she used that when she sprained her ankle. Uh huh. But last night I went up there... And I found a great big 50-cent cigar laying in the ashtray. So I broke the engagement. Oh, you did, huh? Yeah, man. You know I can't afford no gal that smokes expensive cigars <laughs> like that. This is Harlow Wilcox, friends, with vitamin advice. Don't just say vitamins, 
Say Plenamins, the Rexall multivitamins. Plenamins give you vitamins aplenty. Ten important vitamins plus three big extras. Iron, liver concentrate, and vitamin B12. Plenamins give you more than your minimum daily requirement of all vitamins with known minimums. Six B-complex vitamins plus A, C, D, and E. More vitamin A than a full quart of milk provides. More vitamin C than one medium orange. More vitamin D than 15 eggs. More vitamin B1 than two loaves of enriched bread. And more vitamin B2 than 10 pork chops. Yet, Plenamins cost only pennies a day. So mothers, fathers, for the potent multivitamin capsules that give your family vitamins aplenty, ask for Plenamins. P-L-E-N-A-M-I-N-S. Plenamins, the Rexall multivitamins at Rexall drugstores everywhere. Yes, Sheriff, go on, Mr. Brown. As a psychiatrist, I'm very interested in all these romances of yours. Mm, yeah, well, Dr. Tompkins, I hope all this talk about romance ain't embarrassing you none. Oh, no, no, not at all. As a matter of fact, I just got married myself last week. Oh, is that so? Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, I've been a bachelor all my life. Uh, it's a pleasure to talk to somebody behind the Iron Curtain. <laughs> Tell me more about this latest girl of yours. She seems to be the one you're most concerned about. The latest one? Uh Ha, ha, ha. Oh, boy. You know, some gals, when you put your arm around them, they make a big fuss or they slap you, holler for their mama or something. I see. Then this girl welcomed your affection? Welcomed them. Like New York welcomed General MacArthur. (laughs) That's very interesting. Now, just for our records, of course I'll keep it confidential. Uh, what is her name? Her name? Well, uh, her name is, uh, 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 uh... What was that? Sounded like a guitar somewhere. <laughs> and the fellow that's playing has either got four fingers or three strings. <laughs> well, yes. Uh, you stay right there on the couch. I'll look out the window. Why, it's one of those street singers right outside the window. I haven't seen one of those in a long while. Yeah, well, uh, like I was saying, Doctor, this gal's name oh, is... Well, the doctor in this town, in this town. With his gal, you messing around, messing around. <laughs> Mr. Brown, if that's disturbing you, I'll close the window. No, no, no. Uh, If you don't mind, leave it open. Uh, There's something familiar about that backyard baritone. (laughs) Familiar? Yes, sir. Oh, the doctor has a way. The doctor has a way. A high hold of Mary O. Teresa is his way. Say, what's going on here? I thought I heard that street singer mention Teresa. Yeah, I think I heard him mention that name that don't mean nothing to me, too. <laughs> oh, let's load off that couch with the greatest of ears. Don't tell about his wife in the balcony, please. <laughs> Wait a minute. There's something going on here. That man is trying to give you some sort of signal. He is? Yes, and he definitely mentioned Teresa. That's my wife's name. You mean, uh, Teresa Wilson? Yes, I mean Teresa Wilson. Never heard of her. (laughs) Of course you've heard of her. She's the one you've been telling me about. The one that was so friendly. Well, now, wait a minute, Doctor. Wait a minute. I can explain this. You see, what happened was, she and I, uh, her and me... Oh, we, uh, he used to play for old Notre Dame. If he hits the line, you won't be the same. <laughs> the window down the street. Now is the time to use your... <laughs> well, I see it now. 
I'm closing this window, and we're having it out. Uh, uh, excuse me, please, Doctor. I gotta join my partner in the alley. You come back here. You let go of me. Andy, Andy. Uh, Kingfish, let's go. Come yeah, on. come on. Let's run down the alley. Hurry. Come on, boy. Keep going. Hurry up. Yes, good boy. Come on. Call me. Follow me. Oh, Kingfish, you done saved my life. You know what? How can I ever thank you for singing under that window, boy? Oh, I didn't do too bad myself, Andy. While I was singing, the people in the building threw down a dollar and eighty cents and change and a ripe tomato. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's the story, Amos. I just managed to get out of that doctor's office by the skin of my teeth. Yeah, that was something, uh, going to a psychiatrist and telling him that your romantic secrets and then finding out that one of the gals you were telling him about was his wife. Oh, yeah. Before the kingfish showed up, I talked to that doctor for an hour and a half about all my past romances. Boy, he got enough on me to put me in jail for life. I'm going to take it real easy for a while. Yeah, I guess there ain't no more romance in your life, huh, Andy? Well, uh, not exactly, Amos. Uh, I met a very sweet gal this morning. Her name is Janet Sanders. She's kind of sweet on me, too, you know it. Oh, me, Andy. You mean to say that you got another gal already, huh? Well, this is different, Amos. Me and Janet is real serious. I'm going up there tonight and meet her family. That's always a good sign, you know. That way I can vamp the mama a little and get her on my side, too. Oh, good evening, Andy. Well, good evening, Janet. Oh, Andy, I'm so glad you got here. Yeah. All the family's in the living room, and I want you to meet everybody. I know they're all going to love you as much as I do. Yeah. Oh, and here's my uncle, Andy Brown. I want you to meet my favorite uncle, Dr. Melville Tompkins. Brown, so it's you. Dr. Tompkins. Oh, no, no. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. A very rich lady had carloads of gold and trunkfuls of jewels that gleam. But best of all, in a golden jar... And Delafield's all-purpose cream. <laughs> yes, in this jar with a golden top is a single luxurious cream that gives complete complexion care. And it's easier than you'd dream. So why clutter up your dressing table with every cream under the sun? And Delafield's all-purpose cream is all skin creams in one. Why buy a separate cleansing cream and face cream and night cream, too? And Delafield's one deep cream does what all the others do. So get the golden jar at Rexall drugstores everywhere. And Delafield's all-purpose cream for complete complexion care. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Charles Carell. This coming week is National YWCA Week. Few of us realize how much the Young Women's Christian Association does for our young women and teenage girls. I just hope that you'll support the work of your own YWCA in every way you can. Thank you. And I'm Freeman Gosden joining my partner in making the same request. Thank you and good night. See you next Sunday. My beard was blue by half past two. Till he tried Stag Brushless Shave Cream. One shave a day keeps the blue beard away when you use Stag Brushless Shave Cream. Be sure to be with us at this same time next Sunday when your Rexall druggist will again present the Amos and Andy Show, transcribed and directed by Cliff Howell. Stay tuned for the Bing Crosby program, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>